What's up, YouTube? Uh, 2023, honestly, has been a really great year for the Vectrex. Uh, not only have we finally seen the release of Hera Primera by Polyplay, but we also recently got an awesome release in the form of Cavern Rescue by Sean Kelly. But what's really been interesting to me the most this year is from a new developer, uh, Minsoft. It's a fixed shooter arcade game that he's been working on for a long time, and he's been uh, detailing the entire process on his Twitter account, and I've been following along for a little bit, um, and it's been really interesting to see just how this game has progressed, and finally, after a couple weeks, I have managed to get my hands on that game, so I want to just take a look today at Vyrzon by Minsoft. Uh, honestly, this is a great-looking package. I think that's the very first thing that's going to pop out about this, is just how awesome the package looks. You know, very typically with Vectrex games, uh, these homebrew developers try to kind of replicate the look of the original GCE packages, and I love that. You know, I love the consistency that comes with that. Everything looks great on the shelf together, but sometimes you just need something like this, where it's just this beautiful, unique artwork on the front. Um, and you can tell it still does pay homage. It has the, uh, the little grid on the back, it's got the logo on the top and the bottom. You know, it looks like a Vectrex game, but it does do a lot of really cool, unique things, like this amazing piece of artwork on the front. Uh, it honestly looks great. You can see it's got the little ship down there, it's got all the alien ships. Um, it almost looks hand-painted, like it's just a very, very good-looking box art. We do have the European Vectrex logo on the side, along with the logo for the game on the top. And they are switched on the other side, so, you know, you can kind of put it on the shelf to your preference with how you want those logos to be, which I think is really nice. Um, but, yeah, great-looking box. Uh, really nothing to complain about on the front. And the back looks just as good. You can see it's got the logos. We have a little tagline here, too. Take on the biggest threat to the universe since time began. Arcade action featuring 128 waves of enemies and 8 asteroid belts and then i obviously have number 325 and the fact that this game has sold 325 copies this quickly is insane to me um but yeah with that out of the way how about we go ahead and take a look at what comes inside of this game so we do have all the typical vectrex stuff uh, and the very first thing i want to start with is the manual um, and one thing you'll notice about this manual almost immediately is it's really big um, if we compare it with just a standard GCE Vectrex manual, it's very oversized compared to that, which I like. You know, it, it lets you put more detail into it. Uh, you can really see all the printing and stuff, and it looks great. Um, and I really like this. On the back, we have credits and thanks. Because, you know, obviously, the, making these games is not a one-man show. Even though Minsoft developed it, all these people helped him out along the way, and I'm really glad that he showed them off. You know, down here at the bottom, we have the people kind of responsible for the packaging and the printing and everything. And then up at the top, we have the people responsible for the actual programming. Um, it's interesting to see that Malbin worked on this, given that he worked on a thematically somewhat similar game a little while ago, a Vector Blade, but this game is very unique on its own. Uh, inside the manual, we do see a lot of really cool stuff. Um, this is definitely a game I would recommend reading the manual before you play it, just because... I think that you're going to be kind of lost with some of the gameplay features if you don't, um, especially these pages. I really like that you can see the enemy types and also how many hits it takes to kill them because that is one of the unique things about this game is that some of these enemies take quite a few hits to kill. Uh, we also have some built-in memory here, which is nice. It's great when homebrew games have that. So we do have the top three scores with their sector reached and their difficulty setting. Uh, the sector reach is also stored, and then the furthest sector reached, which is kind of cool. Uh, and we do have some screen alignment stuff, so, you know, if your Vectrex is a little wonky, you can kind of adjust it a little bit, which is nice. Um, and then also just some more general gameplay tips, which is always really appreciated. Uh, moving on to the cartridge itself, you know, great-looking cartridge, definitely a Sean Kelly cart. Uh, mine does have a little scratch on it, but honestly, it's not too big of a deal. Uh, it still looks great. The printing on it's amazing. Nice, glossy finish. The logo looks great. Really, not much to say about the cartridge, but, you know, you can mess up a cartridge really easily, and this one looks good. Um, one thing, though, so here we have the overlay. Uh, you know, it comes in the very standard white container. 
Um, I think graphically, this thing looks awesome. I love the colors on it. I love the way that on the back, they kind of didn't put the little protective part right there so that you can actually see your ship fly through through the yellow part. There's me. Hey, everybody. Um, but it's a great looking overlay. There's really no arguing it. We got the controls down here, the logo, uh, lots of good colors. We do have the score and power. You know, it's a very popular thing to do on Vectrex is, is uh, put the stuff at the top so it doesn't have to show up on the screen. But comparing it here with the Mindstorm one, uh, you will see it is ever so slightly taller. Uh, I guess that maybe the tolerances were just a little bit off whenever this was being made. And normally, you know, this is not an issue. And, and even now, it, it's not a super big issue, but just something I wanted to point out is uh, whenever you place this onto the Vectrex, you know, you get it lined up with the bottom uh, spots and you get it lined up with the top spots to make sure it's secure in place. Mine kind of, uh, if I can get it in here, um, kind of pops out a little bit. Uh, so you'll see, I can press on it and push it in and it's kind of bouncing all over the place. And this isn't too big of an issue. The only real problem is you're going to get some light bleeding on the sides. Uh, but I found if I push it enough, it's fine. All right, guys, now we've taken a look at the packaging. How about we take a look at the actual game? Uh, so for the most part, you know, I'll talk whenever I feel like it's relevant, but I also just really want you all to see the gameplay and really take it in, and I'll give my overall thoughts at the end. So let's go ahead and boot this up. I do have to say I love the colors on this overlay. I've always thought the Vectrex just looks great in green, and this intro is awesome. Obviously, all this stuff will look way better in person. You know, I've done my best to make it show up decently on the camera, but there's only so much you can do. So uh, here in the start menu, we do just need to press button one. We've got the option to either continue the game, do the new game. We can change the difficulty settings. And then there is also a mini game, which I have not unlocked yet. So. Now, unfortunately, I cannot show that to you all, but, you know, I'll let you all unlock on your own. So we'll do a new game on normal. And I do want to say, guys, this game, it's pretty difficult, you know. Um, you really need to make sure you're paying attention to where you're shooting. You only get one shot at a time, you know, very Space Invaders-like. Um, the graphics is really hard to tell, but great. Um, everything spins. Also, I'm trying to talk and play at the same time, you know. I'm sorry if my gameplay is not the best, um, but on these first waves, they do kind of come down Space Invaders style. On the second wave, it's more, I guess, more Galaga-like. Um, the enemies just kind of stay up top. Uh, as you can see, there are little uh, UFO-type things that come through, um, very similar to Space Invaders. Uh, let's see if we can get this guy. I guess so, guys. Sometimes it's hard to get these last oh, not there I died. And this gives me an opportunity to show you all this. So if you hit button three, uh, you can kind of jump up and down to avoid. Oh, well, didn't do it there, but it basically lets you avoid uh, incoming missiles. And then you also have this, which is pretty cool. It's like a you only get one per ship, so one per life, and it uh, kills every enemy on the screen. As you all can probably hear, the sound effects are great, so I think I've pretty much explained everything that I need to. Um, I'll just play for a little bit and let you all watch, and hopefully you all enjoy the gameplay.
enemies in the middle obviously take three hits to kill. couple levels. Uh, I know that the first time it happens is on Sector 3. There's what's called a asteroid level. So basically on these your goal is to fly as close to the asteroid as possible to kind of build up your shield. Uh, and once your shield is built up you can basically uh, get a free hit off of an enemy. Uh, but you have to, I believe you have to build it all the way up on this level. And it can be pretty difficult. earlier if I wanted to I could actually continue from there uh, which is pretty cool um, but yeah guys overall I, I do think that this is a pretty good game um, I definitely think that if you have a Vectrex uh, and you're interested in you know, games like this I would pick it up because this is probably the best game to come out this year off the Vectrex guys it's graphically great um, the gameplay is amazing um, and overall just the presentation of the box and the package and everything it's it's very nice guys so thanks for watching and i'll see you all next time Bye -bye.